after throttling Peyton Manning again, the Gators now target Kentucky's Golden Arm QB. If you don't get up out of there real quick, he's in a world of trouble. <laughs> Our Manning Heisman chance is a little shakier. We'll examine who's joined the chase and who has the look of a real winner. Ron Pollock and Notre Dame haven't had that winning look. Will a renewed rivalry with Michigan jumpstart the Irish? North Carolina could use a jumpstart against Nemesis Virginia. Will answers at QB lead the heels to a W? Game day celebrates a surprising September to remember. Next. On some payback. Last year, Virginia's victory cost them about seven million bucks in the Alliance Bowl. Virginia's beaten the heels eight out of ten. They've won the last four times that Carolina has been ranked in this matchup. For the second game now, the super efficient Oscar Davenport replaces the ineffective Chris Keldorf as. Ten years ago, Mac Brown wondered if there would ever be light at the end of the North Carolina football tunnel. But right now, he has a bright and shining program. And today, ABC Sports presentation of college football brings you a key battle from North Carolina. The fifth-ranked Tar Heels at home get set to face their arch rivals from one state north, the Cavaliers of Virginia from Keenan Stadium. North Carolina with some of the best defenders in all of college football, maybe the best at the cornerback position in the game and also a linebacker who may be on his way to the Butkus Award as the top player at that position. But Virginia has players that can stretch a defense and they've got defenders who can knock the tar right off your heels. We get set to bring our road show to Chapel Hill. Here as the fourth rusher, they're in a three-man line. Actually, they bring five when you start to copy it, but Griffith gets some first rainer at the end of it, and it's one of those zone blitz principles, fire zone, whatever you want to call it. They bring five and play zone behind it. Virginia's special teams have been over the years, and they got one. And it's picked up, and it's going to be a Virginia touchdown. Dwayne Stukes scores. Just like that, another block punt. It was Poindexter, I think, that blocked it, and Stoops did the rest. I'm not, I'm not sure if Schmitz even tried to punt this ball. I don't know if he dropped it or saw the block coming. It just looked, oh yes, Poindexter actually took it out of his hand before he hit the ball. That's an unbelievable block punt by Poindexter, one of the great players in college football. Poindexter took it mid-dribble stole it to him from his hand to his foot he tipped it out I, it, it, it looked odd from up here to begin with when you see it on replay it's a tremendous play John Allen Roberts point after is good and the crowd at Keenan Stadium is stunned by what has just happened Anthony Poindexter and Dwayne Stoops with a touchdown for Virginia there it is did he make it? Yes. Touchdown, Virginia. See what happens in that place is the linebacker lines up so deep, you just beat him to the spot. Nice call, George. Cavaliers now are a point away from having the kind of lead that North Carolina had this game last year. Brooks, the second successful quarterback sneak in the game so far. One was for a first down, and of course this one for six points. Well, there's a second touchdown scored against North Carolina, though one was on special teams, but not too many people score anything against that Carolina Blue defense. 17 to 3. A long ways to go, though. We've got 533 left in the half. John Allen Roberts for the point after. Got it. Good looking drive, and that guy Brooks goes in behind the biggins up front. His offensive line came off the ball with a surge, and there's Swiffers are, and obviously a shocked crowd earlier in this game is, is that Jim is all right. Almost 58,000 looking on, and they are stunned by what Virginia has done to their fifth-ranked Tar Heels so far. That might not come to the same kick. Just about the same spot, different return man this time. Antoine Black, and he got it out to the 28, maybe the 29-yard line. A little shoving after the play, but it's been the Virginia special teams. We said right before that first punt attempts by North Carolina that they've been special in the last 38 games. They blocked 12 punts. You make it 13 now. They blocked a punt for a touchdown that Stooks took in. It was Poindexter who blocked it. Then the fumble recovery that was scooped up, and uh, they almost had a touchdown out of that. They ended up with a field goal from it, so... 
10 points from the Virginia special teams today. And you add that to the 88-yard drive, and Brooks capped it from a yard out with a quarterback sneak. And now it's shotgun time and four wideout time for Carolina. Here's Linton across the middle. Got about five. We're probably going to see a different North Carolina setup now for quite a while here, Gary, not just in this quarter, but in the third as well. Yeah, they, they really went away from the running game a week ago against Maryland, and Davenport was very comfortable throwing the ball around, so I think they're going to give Davenport an opportunity to throw the ball down the field here. Four wide out grouping, and he's going to go complete. Great catch, May Brown out of bounds at the 45. Boy, he's got nice hands. Nay Brown is probably the best thinker as the wide receivers. He runs most of their option routes, a lot of their read routes. He's very good at being able to find the opening in the zone. Davenport has confidence in him, so he just throws it up and knows that Nay Brown is going to go get it. Davenport operating from the shotgun this time. Not just the scrambler, this guy. He puts a nice touch on this ball, right into the spike, steps into it. First down, three wideouts to the right. They'll throw the screen back to Stevens the other way. Yeah, a little bit of a high delivery. Had a man out there trying to help block for him. Poindexter <laughs> got over there to make the tackle along with Donnie Green. Poindexter is really unfoolable so far in this football game. He seems to be going the right direction on every play. Virginia's playing a lot of zone, soft zone right now. Second down, short five, blitz coming. Davenport over the middle. Ooh, Nay Brown took a shot even though he didn't get his hands on the ball. As Wally Rayner let him have it. Brad, you called it a blitz and you were half right. That ain't bad. <laughs> Guy came from the outside, but Shannon Taylor, the defensive end, dropped. That's the fire zone blitz. The blitz with the zone behind it that really confused Davenport and made that throw not go exactly where he wanted to. See, I'd have thrown to the wrong guy, too, then. <laughs> You're right. You watch Shannon Taylor, number nine, drop on that play. Even though they're blitzing at the top, Davenport's a little bit confused. It does nothing happen. Here comes everybody on third and five. Got it to Nay Brown. He's got the first down to the 30. Rayner let Davenport have it after he let go, but... It's a completion on a first down, North Carolina. That was definitely Davenport's best throw. Rainier came, was right in his face, found Nay Brown and got the first down out upon the play. Nay Brown is the first down guy that he'll be looking for in those situations. So crisply, North Carolina moves it down the field, first and 10 at the Virginia 30. Davenport's got a lot of room in front of him. Here he goes. Davenport all the way to the 11. Wow. A shade over 6'4", and he runs a 4'5", 40. You're going to see some of it right here. Those are nice numbers. 6'4", and 4'5", together is tough to stop. This is the time again. Virginia blitzed and played zone, but they cannot handle the speed of Davenport in the no-huddle offense. First down. Davenport sets and fires, completes it down to Stevens at the 5. L.C. Stevens with a grab, and it's first and goal. North Carolina with 140 left in the half. Timeout with 135 left. Keldorf congratulates Davenport as he comes to the sideline. And the fans finally have something to cheer about. So far this game, a game dominated by Virginia. As the Cavaliers special teams, Schmitz trying to punt it. Poindexter stuffs it. Stoops takes it the rest of the way for the first score for the Cavaliers. That put them up 7 to nothing. Second quarter, it was Womack time. True freshman bouncing around for about 69 yards just on that drive alone. And then Dominique Williams fumbled the kickoff. That one they bring back. They don't let him advance it for the score, but it did lead to a field goal, and that's where we stand right now. 20 to 3 with a minute 35 left in the second quarter. That's the one thing that the shotgun offense and the four wide receiver things do does for your when you're playing at home. It gets your crowd in the game. And that's what's happened right now. Rick Lance had pretty good control of this game. But as Davenport went shotgun and the Carolina receivers started to get some matchups that they like. Things started to work well for North Carolina. 65-yard drive in just a couple of minutes. 
And it is not first and goal. They can get a first down inside about the two-foot line. So it's second down and four. They'd like the crowd to quiet down just a little bit in that end zone. Davenport. Quick slant. Almost oh. intercepted. That one had a little bit too much on it. Intended for Octavius Barnes. You're exactly right. This was, as you see, Davenport looking to his left. He sees the blitz, throws the quick slant, but puts a little bit too much juju on that one, and Barnes gets the catch. <laughs> so it's third and four at the five. Look how deep the safeties are for, for deep in the end zone. Davenport throws out of the backfield to Linton. Can he get to the stick? You bet he can. Touchdown. That was a good-looking drive. Carolina in the end zone for the first time today. They ran a two-minute drill with about four minutes to go in a half, and I think Rick Lance and Virginia is going to be upset about this. They are in a zone coverage, and there's no way a back should get outside the corner of your corner in that situation. They were playing for safety, and they didn't come up with the tackle. Josh McGee, extra point is up and good. So in just a little over two minutes, North Carolina takes it into the Virginia end zone for the first time today. Antoine Harris right here should have turned this ball in. I think it was him number 26 to the outside. You see the help inside. Nobody's there. They could be forces him inside. The tackle could be made very easily by Thweet, number 32. Here's Harris to the outside. He has to force the play inside. Here's where his help is coming from the inside. Gets beat outside. There's the breakdown in the defense. That play should not have scored. Wait, on Schmidt's kick. This one, though, will go to Terrence Wilkins at about the two-yard line. Cuts back to the middle of the field. In some trouble, and down he goes. That's exactly the kind of play North Carolina special teams wanted to start this half with. A good special teams play of their own, and there is a flag down. And if it's an illegal block against Virginia, they're going to be in a serious hole to start things off. New referee in, Courtney Mulsey, the new Dead referee ball. with the call. Personal foul on the kicking team. Oop, that's yards. not good for North Carolina special First team. Down. Personal foul. So they walk it off 15 when they had them down near their own 12-yard line. This will take it out to the 27. Mac Browns runs uh, almost an NFL-type program here. He treats the guys great, very relaxed attitude, but he's not going to settle for those type of dem penalties after the whistle. No. Nope. Carolina brings Simmons up as if he may blitz. Brooks. Oh! That was a fumble, too. Newman, did he get it? Newman made the hit and almost made the scoop. I believe they're going to say he's down. That's one of those where Seinfeld goes, oh, Newman. Newman. Carolina lined up in the bare front right here. Here's Simmons. Here's Newman coming around the outside right here. Not a good matchup. Got a back block him, Charles Kirby, and he runs over Kirby and then runs over Brooks. That ball they didn't say was loose, but it was awfully yeah, close. Yeah, it was close. Second down, 16. Carolina's misaligned. Brooks going to go deep. Oh, he had a stop and go on, and his receiver, Brian Owen, stopped, and he went. I just don't pass. understand why they don't get the ball towards Crowell. They have to throw it to him. <laughs> Penalty marker down as we go to John Saunders. Brad, time for this Burger King update. Iowa and Illinois in the Big Ten. You know about Tavian Banks. Or rather, this is Ohio State against Missouri. The long touchdown pass there as Joe Germain is 6 for 6 for 144 yards and two touchdowns. 21 to 10 is the score there. Back to you. 
All right, John, they got two quarterbacks in Columbus. There's two quarterbacks in Chapel Hill. One has played much more than the other today. Oscar Davenport has a touchdown throw. Very surprised that Carolina took that penalty. It would have been third and 15. Now it's second and 20. And we'll see if it comes back to haunt them. There's Crowell going out to match up with Robert Williams. Second down, 21 at the 16-yard line. Lincoln Blitz, Carolina. They come with it. Were they offside? Yes. Might have jumped in there too early. Now, La Montaigne lift his hand up that time. The left guard, number 77, as Simmons was threatening his A gap. And it's going to be second and 26 if that's the case. Ball. Ball and start. it is. On the offense. Five yards. Second down. You start you getting K Mays and Simmons up there, you get a little nervous. Simmons 41 is right there. Here comes K Mays behind him right there. That's a stunt. North Carolina was going to be in a zone blitz that time, bringing linebackers and only having four people playing zone behind it. And now the Carolina faithful coming to life for the defense. Second and 26. They'll run it. Jones nailed at the line of scrimmage. Greg Ellis said hello. And now it's third down in a mile. Well, Virginia has a drive going, but it's in the wrong direction right now. Carolina has come out in the second half with much more intense, much more enthusiasm than they did in the first half when they really were frankly sleepwalking out here. Third down at 26. There's the third down conversions today for Virginia, and there aren't a lot of third and 26 in the book. Now, and what you want to do is get out of this alive. I think they're going to take a timeout. Some confusion. Aaron Brooks trying to get his lineman. Huddled arrive. Alvarez Memorial Hospital. Breathing on his own and stable. And when they made that announcement, it's like everybody said, hey, we got a game. Let's have some fun. Third down at 26. Virginia in a not so fun spot at their own 11 yard line. Brooks wants to throw a screen, does. It's not going to get much though. Only to about the 15 to Ahmad Hawkins. Vonnie Holiday helped blow that play up. And Mays is the guy that had the sack that sort of started all this unraveling for Virginia on this offensive set. Yeah, it was a matchup that uh, he just overpowered the fullback on the play. There's nothing you can do that. Your fullback has to block their linebackers. You can't throw, and that's really the key to this North Carolina defense as uh, Dre Bly, I think, is back there now. They're going to put somebody that can make some plays. Bly trying to get the crowd into it. Rotella to punt from his own goal line. A dangerous return, man. Nice kick again. Rotella hangs one up. Bly waits on it, just scoops it at the 46 and tackle at the 49. Nice coverage by Stoops, the man that scored the first touchdown for Virginia. He says, nope, not today. You're not going to take one. Did you see Bly just scoop that ball up? He had, He's got that hands. Is, that is an athlete. That's why he can <laughs> intercept passes. Caught it with his hands. He didn't use his chest. Sort of snatched it out of yeah. midair. He's a good one. Don't forget, following our game, coming up next, Notre Dame and Michigan at 3.30 Eastern. Sixth-ranked Wolverines on their home turf. And that one's had some exciting moments over the years. Notre Dame trying to get back in the win column. Well, I know North Carolina would like to establish the running game, but it works so well go four wideouts. Might as well do it, huh? They do it again, and they go complete on first down. Jason Peace. And Peace dropped the ball, but they blow it dead at the 42-yard line, about a yard short of a first down. Peace, another in the long list of excellent wide receivers. Here's a guy that used to be a high school quarterback and a highly touted one over at Northern High School here in the Durham, uh, here in the area at Durham, North Carolina. And they had to kind of sell him on the fact of being yeah. a wide receiver. He's turning into a good one. Yeah, once he bought into it, he's really turned his game on. Second and short. Davenport, plenty of time. Running out of it, but running out of the pocket as well in the open field. Oscar Davenport down the left sideline, and Poindexter knocked right. him out of bounds. He ran out of the pocket, and then he ran right out of his shoe. <laughs> he did a Barry Sanders on that one. You know what? He did that last week against Maryland. He's needs some tighter laces. Yeah, they got to get him 11 and a half instead of a 12. <laughs> 
The pocket breaks down here. I thought they could have got a sack right here. Runs out of the pocket. That's what the running quarterback can give you. And now the shoe just throws a shoe right there. It yep. just keeps going. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely got to find a little tighter shoes. Well, I got a little help on that one. He kind of got shoehorned by Stoops <laughs> is what happened there. 18-yard scramble, though, and a first down inside the Virginia 25 for the Tar Heels. Davenport throws on the run, completes it out to Brown. Well, Nate did a nice job to hurdle one man, Joe Williams, and then he's unceremoniously taken out by Thweet. Maybe got a yard out of all of that. That's really where the zone defense, remember earlier the touchdown, here's where the zone defense is going to help you just play the passing game and make a stop. Ball's completed, everybody in position. Here's the corner, here's the help inside, use the sideline, force them out of bounds that time. That's when you're using good zone defensive principles and forcing him to know where your help is. Using that sideline as an extra defender over there, ran him out, only about a half yard gain. We'll call it second and 10, in fact, at the 24 of the Cavaliers. Davenport loads twice, goes to the end zone, overshot everybody. Yeah, guess who's back there, though? <laughs> Poindexter, one of them, intended for L.C. Stevens. That time again, Virginia gambled and went with their fire zone look, Brad, where they brought five different defensive players and left the middle of the zone wide open. You'll see a three down lineman, two linebackers are coming, and the middle of the field is wide open. Davenport does not recognize it, throws the ball down the sideline right into the teeth of the zone. And it brings up third and 10. Davenport's gonna swing it out. Waiting for a block is Linton, he got it. But he stepped out of bounds before he got to the first down mark. They're going to mark this at the 18. I know he stepped out of bounds, and that's what the official's saying. He's just finding out now because he thought he got the first. Joe Williams this time made the same mistake as earlier. He had help inside. As This is like a, a wide screen type play. Joe Williams is going to come into your picture. He needed to turn the play in. You see he had help inside right there by Donnie Green. Left foot he foot. got blocked, and play gets a first, well, not a first down, but a chance to get a field goal try. It'll be a 35-yard field goal attempt. They try to cut this game down to seven, and they do. Josh McGee with the field goal. So North Carolina first comes out and stormed up on defense. And then Virginia holds and forces a field goal. We've got a good one going in Chapel Hill. It's 20 to 13. Next kick going to Harris at the one. Antoine Harris. And he got out. Close to the 28-yard line. That's where Virginia will go back to work. What was the problem, Gary? Virginia lines up. Remember, this is first down. They only have 10 men on the field. There should be a back right here blocking Keith Newman, this guy. Now, watch the pressure that Brooks gets from Newman right in his face, tries to throw the ball outside to Brian Owen. The ball is thrown behind, and maybe the guy with the best hands on the field and the best athlete on the field, Dre Bly, comes up with it. 14 points in what, 17 seconds? Oof. That'll change again. Yeah, it will. That's his 13th career interception. It's tough enough to play this North Carolina defense with 11 guys to try to take him out with 10. Of course, he's only played 16 college yeah, games. Yeah, that's right. That's pretty good. <laughs> First down, Virginia at its own 24. Well, they fumbled. Oh, it. And it's scooped up by North Carolina. It's Newman. Keith Newman. The bottom's falling out of the Cavaliers' sideline. Keith Newman, number nine, is the linebacker. North Carolina shifted out of one front. He's right there. The ball gets snapped. And as Brooks tries to go for it, it gets kicked forward. It's like, hey, thank you very much. Turns outside, he's got Dre Bly this time as a blocker, but he's caught behind this time by Brian Owen. Wow. They bring it back. Can't be advanced from where the ball landed, where he scooped it up, so they're going to bring it back to the 26-yard line. 
Well, that saved about 15 more yards, but it still gives North Carolina the ball at the 26. Again, the four wide out group. Davenport straight down the middle. Had it tipped. Wally Rayner got a hand on it. The middle linebacker dropped deep back there. Knocked it away. It'll be second down. Keith Newman's raised some havoc for Virginia today. And now the North well, Carolina offense trying to turn it into points. Virginia's raising their own havoc right now. That's two. You cannot make those type of errors against a good defense. You can't make them against an average defense. Right. And this is one of the best in college football. The so. easiest pass you have in a quarterback center exchange. Second down, 10, high snap. Here's a draw play out of the shotgun. Linton spins and runs into Poindexter and Donnie Green. Remember last year, North Carolina didn't score in the first quarter against Virginia, nor did they score in the fourth quarter, but Virginia had their best fourth quarter comeback ever. Well, it's a little bit different. As I said, this might be one of the best third quarters North Carolina's played. Of course, the third quarter is only five and a half minutes old, but look what they have done to tie the game. I really think North Carolina got a bad call on that fumble recovery. I mean, that was not a lateral. That was just extender exchange. They could have run with it. Third and seven. Davenport over the middle, found his man, Linton. He's going to have to break a tackle to get the first down. He's pretty close. Rayner and Poindexter are there again, and let's see where they spot this one. Right now, the fans are saying go, go, go already. They think it's about a half yard it short. It is a half yard short. I think the way the momentum's going right now, Mac Brown is going to let him go for it. Especially the way his defense has been playing. Here they come with the extra tight end and the fullback. Remember, the inside, the tackles for Virginia are their best football players. If you want to run that quarterback sneak, you're running right into the teeth of that defense. Dyer and Linton, dual backfield. Davenport straight ahead, driving. I think he got it. He sure did. And they come up shoving. Major pile up on a quarterback sneak. Jeff Saturday, that tough throwback center was the guy that led the way. Yeah, Greg Davis said he'll, what, he'll play till he drops, That's right? right. <laughs> Saturday and all, ACC center. Here he is, number 64. Boom. He got a piece of Anderson enough to send it back. Yeah, Joe Ellison did a nice job that time, too, just rooting out and making a block. They got a Saturday on offense. They got a holiday on defense. If we get maybe a weekday or something else, <laughs> we, got, uh, we got everything. And they got a bunch of guys are going to play on Sunday. That's right. <laughs> First down at the 16-yard line. George is wearing that cap out right now. Wow, he's taking it out and off 100 times, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. 8.23 left third quarter. Tie game. North Carolina trying to change that here. Dyer in motion. Davenport. Quick throw out to his fullback, and he one-hopped yeah. it to him. He had the pressure inside that time. And now Brian, he's got another fight going on. Brian Threat that time came inside and got to Davenport before he could throw it. <laughs> It's a bend on your knees type day. It's like he ran two miles already, yep. and he's got a ways to go. After you've seen as many ACC games as that man has, and he's won more in the ACC, 106 wins, 64 of them in ACC. Only Frank Howard at Clemson won more in conference play. Second down and 10. Down into a draw play. Here comes the fullback. He's a load, takes it to the nine. Deion Dyer, sophomore out of Chesapeake, Virginia. And we've got a man down for the Cavaliers, and it's Donnie Green, the freshman linebacker, shaken up. Twenty to twenty with the injury. We got a reminder for you coming up Monday night football. 49ers are three and one. The Carolina Panthers have had their number in the NFC West recently. First appearance for Carolina on Monday Night Football. And the 49ers in first place in the West. That'll be a good one, 9 o'clock Eastern on Monday night. And Donnie Green hops up and runs off. Got some big shoes to fill between Thweet and Donnie Green with 
Ferrier and Sharper, the two great linebackers who were both high draft choices, gone now. And we didn't even mention John Harris, who came off that defensive front for Virginia. So when you lose three guys to the pros in the first two rounds, you know you've lost some people. Davenport on third down today. And he's got a third and four here. Oscar's got time. Throws on the run. Touchdown. Algie Crumpler, the tight end. There's one of those throws, Brad, that if Davenport doesn't hit it, everybody in this crowd and the coaches are saying, what'd you throw this one for? Davenport pulls it down, throws it up, pretty good coverage, but the big guy comes up with it. Ooh. Up a couple weeks ago. Surprisingly, they need all five of his touchdowns. Breaking free. The ball is loose, and North Carolina's got it. It's Keith Newman again. I think Brian Simmons knocked it away, and Newman ended up with it. Antoine Womack, the young freshman, made his first mistake. He's been special all day long, but that one had it stripped from him. You see Simmons come from the left side of the screen, pops his arm, and the All-American makes a play, and Newman's in the right spot again. What a play. What a brilliant half by this Carolina blue-clad defense. You know, a year ago, Virginia was very unhappy. They had 35 giveaways, and they've had three horrible giveaways here in the second half of this game that's really going to cost them the game if they do lose. Still almost 10 minutes left, and you see the anguish of Womack, the freshman, who dropped the ball. Linton hit the backfield, bounces off, and somehow got two out of that. Rayner hit him. He I spun away. I think Byron Three, number 32, the freshman, is going to be a tremendous football player before he's through at Virginia. He just is all over the field, disrupting, covering players. He was in on that play also. He, he made the initial hit before it was cleaned up, and he he's almost unblockable out there. And You know, they're a lot different than they used to be, Brad. I mean, 230-pound yeah. freshman, he runs <laughs> like the wind. Second down and eight. That's what North Carolina's done in Virginia's red zone today. They've made them all count. Two touchdowns, two field goals. Here's Linton heading outside. Jonathan tiptoes the sideline, and he's got it. First and goal. Boy, I thought he was running out of real estate over there and suddenly put the brakes on and tiptoed down the sideline for 13 yards. Brad, to play good defense, you have to know where your help is. Dwayne Stukes, the corner this time, again, does not realize that he has help. He's got Poindexter on the inside. Watch from the right side of your screen. Stukes get caught inside. Linton gets outside. And everybody else that could have helped him on the corner wasn't able to a positive play. It should have been nothing on the play. It was well defense. The corner this time it was Stoops made the miscue. First and goal at the four. The toss. Sweep to Linton. He's going to have to really work for this one. Wow, he did, didn't he? He did, and he got close. <laughs> he almost got in. I thought that was going to be about a two-yard loss, and he turned it into a game. Shannon Taylor at the top of the screen got held this time. He did by the big football fullback that time, Kirby. With the sleeper he, hole. He, he sure did. Thweed ended up with the tackle again, but I thought there was holding at the end man of line of scrimmage. Yeah, Linton, they spotted inside the one. You, you, you said it right, though, Brad. Litton wanted that goal on that time. Well, he's helped to get him here, and... You kind of doubt that it'll be anybody other than 27 that'll get it. Nope, it's Keldor. Whoa, touchdown. My, how Carolina has turned this game around. Well, let me rephrase it. My, how Virginia... Hard line. That's you know, where they'll spot it down. So Brooks comes out. Now he's got to start thinking about Crowell. They should have thought about him maybe all day long. Uh, I believe you're right. 
That's the best matchup on the field, I think, for Virginia. They just haven't gone their way. If he has time to throw it to him, that could be a question mark, too. Whoa, what about that draw? Brooks in the open field looking for a block, got one, and got it out to the 34, picked up about eight and flags all over the place. Newman made the tackle. Well, Keith got a I, I hand in the face yeah, mask. I think his maybe. hand came around and got the face mask. Just a touch. Block in the back, oh, above boy. the waist, on the Another offense. Way. Ten yards. Front of the it might have been the block on Dre Bly who was trying to make the tackle. I don't know. As you say, it's getting gooier. <laughs> A smile of sarcasm, obviously, on George Welsh's face. He didn't like the call. Of course, George is three new offensive co coaches on this uh, team this year. Tom O'Brien left, head coach at Boston College. Sparky Woods is now making the calls. They've had remarkable success, this Virginia team, in their offense over the years. Throw it over the middle, now to the 30. That's it, though. Terrence Wilkins. Greg Williams made the tackle. And uh, the lonely end, is that what they used to call yeah, it? That's right. He's pretty lonely today. He's going to say, guys, have you seen my draft rating? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how big I am and how fast I run? <laughs> Averaged over 20 yards a catch last year. That led the ACC. Came in, the top receiver with nine catches and averaging over 16 through two games, but only two catches for him today. Brooks in trouble, down he goes. Vonnie Holiday on a Saturday. To him, every day is a holiday. The North Carolina defense is distorting the pass routes for Virginia, the bump and run. Brooks comes back, there's no one to throw to. He has to turn it down. Holiday beats his man cleanly. Five-step drop, you can take a three-step drop. There's no one to throw to, and that's really what the bump and run does to you. It makes you try pick routes. It makes you try little uh, people coming across the formation. What they need to do is throw the ball outside and say, my guy's as good as yours, let me throw it. Uh-oh. Ellis this time nails him. He got the pass to Jones, and Jones is buried at about the line of scrimmage. Ellis's eyes probably were his biggest saucers that time. Yep. He's finally going to get a chance to get a sack and there's a screen on the play. The defense has dominated for North Carolina in this half. Came in ranked second in the country in defense. Just, just have the feeling that there's going to be a cherry on the top of this at any moment. Either a block punt or Bly is going to take one. They got close again, but he goes down again. It was tipped, though, so there'll be no roughing the kicker. Boy, I wonder if he, he must have just grazed it, because he still punted it, what, 35, 36 yards? Yep. The referee made the call immediately that the ball was tipped. Let's check in with Dean on the sideline. Brad Oscar Davenport behind me, the quarterback. In fact, he's right in front of her. <laughs> Excuse me, Miss. Can you scoot over? Uh, he will not return move. today. Uh, you see the left knee wrapped up. It's the same knee that he tore up two years ago at ACL. It's not definitive exactly what the problem is, but what is definitive is he will not return today. And I like how Dean was his man. own producer on the yes, sideline, or director. That's good. Now Keldorf at the controls, and right now Carolina would like to just put a running game together and start to ice this thing away. They're up by 14, with a little over five to go as Mike Geeter carry the ball. Brad, you know, an injury, and, and I had a bunch of them playing, is now never was a big deal until you injure the same thing again. Uh -huh. Then it scares you because you go, you know, I've already gone through this. It feels exactly like it did before, and it cost me a whole year. So it, it may be a sprain, but right now Davenport's going, Oh, boy. Not again. Not again. Clock stopped here with 5-12 as the officials have a confab. While they do, you wonder what turned this game around. Remember back to the third quarter in this game. That might have been actually the turning point. The key play is Gary said only 10 guys out on the field for Virginia. The heavy pressure coming from Newman. They tried the pass to Brian Owen, Dre Bly. Took it 17 yards, North Carolina touchdown. That turned the whole thing around, it seemed. And it was 
particularly inexcusable because it was a first down play. That's something that should be you can go in no time. You know, you have plenty of time to get the guys together on the sideline. Quarterback's job to look around and make sure he has 10 other guys on the field. Mac Brown not breathing too easily yet, but certainly closer to it. Under five minutes to go. Now the Virginia defenders pointing at the offensive line of North Carolina, and they're doing likewise back the other way. So we'll let Courtney Mozzie make the call. Keldorf is trying to give us, uh, I think that's definitive now. <laughs> Don't forget Notre Dame and Michigan coming up. All sides. All the Yards. Courtney Mozzie's taken Seven over now. in the second half as our referee. He was home watching the game on TV when Jim Knight, our referee that collapsed in the first half, went down. And so Courtney's taken over. The got over here uh, during halftime and has taken over as our referee. And again, to the folks that watched and uh, uh, hoped and prayed with us and Jim and his family, Jim is at Memorial Hospital breathing on his own and stable after that collapse in the first half. It's the best news we've had in I don't know how many years. Yeah, you know, uh, I guess if something had bad has to happen, this isn't a bad place for it to happen. I mean, the medical people are here. The emergency ambulance was here. If, if you happen to by yourself somewhere, there's no hope. Well, I know who our most valuable players are today. Yeah, that's for sure. And yeah. they're not that those guys right over there that are with the ambulance and the EMS staff because they were out there in force today. They may have saved a life. Boy. Third down five as we approach four minutes. North Carolina picks up a first down here, and it would be a tough struggle. As if it's not now. And Keldorf's going deep. Got a man out there. Got him. Touchdown, Octavius Barnes. 50 yards right on the money. And there's the cherry on top that I was talking about. Came from the offense. He split Joe Willems and Stephen Phelan right between it. And Keldorf showed why some people consider him maybe the second or third best quarterback coming out this year as he put the long ball right in the basket. 97, the ACC will realize more money, more TV money, more money from television for football than, than for basketball. <laughs> Carolina with eight men up on the line of scrimmage. Fumble again. And covered again by North Carolina. This time it's K-Mays. This time Thomas Jones was trying to change the ball in his hands and just dropped it. And I guess if you're Virginia, you're saying, hey, we might as well make all the mistakes right now because this one's over. Yep. North Carolina will probably try to just run the ball and the clock out. You'll see it. Jones is going to come around, trying to change it, starts bobbling it. And then K-Mays puts one bobble right under his chin, and he never had a chance to pick it up. And that'll make you throw your cap away. Yeah, George has worked that cap today, and now it's gone. <laughs> no, it's, got it. it's behind his head. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I thought it was like... gone. <laughs> well, he's put some great teams together, right. and he'll put another good one together, and they'll probably end up winning seven before it's all well, over. Well, he That's has for the, the case. for the last ten years, hasn't he? Yep. Run inside, Geeter. As talented as Virginia is, and there's a lot of talented football players on the field for Virginia, you still can't replace experience. Virginia and Ball State had to replace the most starters in college football this year, and you can see as this game has gone along, a lot of unforced errors have happened to this Virginia team, and they've not been able to withstand the charge of a great North Carolina squad. Back in 1987, North Carolina trailed Georgia Tech 20 to 3 at the half before coming back to win 30 to 23. Mac Brown was telling us the other day that was kind of one of his watershed games a little bit to get this program headed in the right direction. And this game today will make.